I really think looking at the incoming classes of students are important. Not, not just looking at a basic assessment score when they walk through the door or whether to retest or, or, or what they might need, but it's really more, uh, uh, more of a holistic look at preparation and the barriers and issues that students may be facing. I think one of the things in post-secondary we've got to focus on is that we have to focus to some degree on our responsibility when we accept a student. Uh, I know a lot of a lot of us, and I worked in post-secondary for 18 years, so I, I can call myself part of us. A lot of us like to talk about things like student choice and, and student responsibility and things like that, but you know, to the state's perspective, I think we have an expectation from the students and their parents and the state that we're going to do everything we can when we accept a student to help them be successful. It doesn't mean giving them things, it doesn't mean taking away their responsibility, but providing the resources that they need to be successful. In terms of what the P20 Collaborative is uh, and, and how it might fit into Senate Bill 1, this is the mechanism that we're linking student data between K-12 and post-secondary and ultimately into the workforce and other places. So we'll be able to track students and, and look at a much deeper level of what kind of factors going on in high school, not just an assessment or a test score, but looking at grades and curricula students have taken and, and the paths that have gotten them into post-secondary and how that affects their preparation levels when they walk through the door uh, and, and their long-term success. So we, we will be able to measure much more than this increase in, in, in completion rates for students with developmental needs. We'll be able to dig in at a much deeper level and, and that's what I think we need to do. Some of the most important details that we need to focus on is really making sure that we're providing the resources that are necessary for implementing Senate Bill 1 uh, at all levels in different areas, teacher ed programs, arts and sciences uh, areas that are going to support what it is that we're doing. It's really easy to make kind of broad sweeping promises and you know overarching goals and those are great but uh, it, it's, it's going to be important to focus on some of those details and the logistics of those details and what some arts and sciences faculty may need to carry out some of those SB1 initiatives may be a little bit different from what uh, some other folks need and how do we make sure that the two integrate very well. I think those are some of the most critical details we're going to need to focus on to make sure that this is a meaningful endeavor. I think some of the details that post-secondary has to work on as we uh, implement Senate Bill 1 is keeping the information um, flowing, if you will. Uh, it's so important um, across the different disciplines that as um, new faculty come on board um, in the future that they are uh, brought up to date about these changes and uh, I think the communication systems across the campus is a is a significant challenge. So this is where I see that in teacher preparation that our faculty can be uh, leaders on the campus and helping other departments to uh, understand about what these requirements are and, and taking it further, not just what the requirements are, but to be, to be available uh, to work with the arts and science faculty to uh, uh, help them to uh, examine those syllabi to ensure that the alignment uh, does exist and to ensure that we are uh, implementing assessments and uh, that uh, reflect what, what is expected from Senate Bill 1. So it's a, it's a terrific opportunity uh, for uh, education faculty, I think, uh, to be thrust into this leadership role campus-wide uh, to, to help our colleagues and to assist them um, as they, they revise their syllabi and, and change their classroom. So that, that's a significant detail. I think that communication, that, that opportunity to, to provide assistance uh, throughout the campus. Well, since I'm a teacher educator, I am um, obviously interested in making sure that we prepare teachers who are able uh, to um, apply those standards, uh, who, who understand those standards, and um, also uh, are well prepared to assess students using the um, assessment for learning tools that we've learned about. I think that post-secondary, uh, first we have a language barrier. Um, a lot of terminology. Um, one of the, the, the things that we're discussing um, in all the training sessions and things is what is it we're telling you, what is it we're hearing from teachers that you don't understand? And a lot of it's a language barrier. Uh, we all think we know assessment, but there are terms that are a little bit different. So let's think in terms of what is assessment, what's the purpose of it. 
Um, so I do think that post-secondary is going to have to identify things such as that. Um, I do think that just as school districts do, you have people who are very experienced and I think those very experienced people, um, you want to utilize them uh, in this process, um, but at the same time, you don't want to alienate them. And I think this bill could be an alienation factor for some people uh, if we choose to implement it that way. It's the approach. And I think post-secondary institutions need to always be thinking of appro the approach that we use. Top-down is never popular. Um, and even though we have the law, the law actually says to us, you get to decide how you do this. So it's not a top-down telling us anything, and we need to know that. Um, so now let's go bottom up. Let's start working with our faculties, and let's let them determine what it is that we need to be doing so that we do have those connectors, that we have uh, conversations with school districts in some meaningful uh, way. I think one of the most the, the best things that happened was putting some of our post-secondary professors on the committees working with the school districts. What an eye-opener and what a, what a wonderful venture for those people. Uh, these school districts are seeing power in having university people on those teams. So I think it's a teaming. Uh, we have to look at every way we can um, to connect and communicate with school districts and realize that they're also having to learn to connect and talk to us differently college faculties, all, not just teacher prep, need to build that bridge between the high school classroom and the college classroom, not just stating uh, what, they, what we have done for decades, generations, what we want the students to come to us with, but to really look at what these students have and what they need and to try to meet their needs, not just that we have it, you come and take it as we present it, but that we can um, really see the vision for their future, for their careers, and how the subjects that we teach will impact them as individuals and help them really to become better citizens of Kentucky. I think that's what we're looking for um, because this is the future of the state. And even in this day when so many things are being cut, especially in education, um, the repercussions go on for years. It's not just what we're doing now, but it is the future. That's a big concern for me, uh, that we uh, meet the criteria, uh, the goals of, of Senate Bill 1, and that, um, that we involve extensively all the people who need to be involved uh, in helping the students be successful. Uh, we have, we've been focused at Northern on Retention anyway, and um, this will help that initiative. Uh, but it's a, it's a very high expectation, or it's a, re it's a reasonable expectation, but it's a very serious one, and, and I think that's, that's a major challenge we have yet. I think communications is a, is a real big issue. Uh, uh, I have not seen that happen before, uh, and I think I, I purposely watched Dr. King, and I've, and I've watched him in, in various settings, uh, and I've purposely watched uh, Commissioner Holliday in, in settings, uh, both together and individually and the communication is taking place. Uh, I think that's critical. And I think it really needs to continue because it's going to be a really hard process to uh, unscaffold. Implementation is where policy really, really happens. And we have an opportunity in, in higher education to participate in ways that we haven't had that opportunity before. And I, that's, I think, another profound aspect of this process is for the first time, uh, in, in my knowledge, uh, high, people involved in higher education and teacher education have a real opportunity to be a part of the discussion and to inform it and help frame it and shape it as it goes and make a real difference and not simply be reactive to it. And I think it's an obligation of ours to pay very close attention to what's being done, um, to participate in the conversations and be at the table and talk about what resources are necessary, what the implications of, for example, using formative assessment mean um, and one of the things that's exciting about Senate Bill 1 is the flexibility that is implied in tailoring instruction for individual students. That has implications for the idea of meeting high standards versus standardizing a curriculum. So we have an opportunity now to have a conversation about how do we meet high standards without necessarily inflicting high stakes on everyone. And it's not that accountability doesn't matter, of course it matters. but. What we can do as higher educators is engage in that policy discussion for one of the first times in a really productive way to talk about the fact that we can support 
the attainment of high standards without being punitive and really set the stage for all levels of public education to be successful. Really varying instruction and assessment, you know, for the students in the uh, post-secondary classrooms. Um, because a lot of our assessments, as was mentioned earlier, tend to be more summative in nature and, and that kind of thing. So having some ongoing ways of, of um, assessing students. Also, I think working on the learning climate, I know that was one of the things that we talked about in highly effective teaching and learning situations. So I think creating a, a climate where uh, students feel engaged and it's a collaborative effort you know, um, so I think that's important. That's something that I really work on in my own classes, is where students can feel like they are active participants in the classroom situation. And where it's not just because it was mentioned earlier that in post-secondary, not all, always, and, and sometimes not a lot in some of the teacher education or teacher preparation, you know, classes, but there's still some traditional aspects of lecturing and top-down kind of teaching and that kind of thing, but I'm really very much an advocate for the shared collaborative learning experience. And so I think modeling that and, and being engaged in that at, at the post-secondary level is going to be very beneficial, you know, for our teachers when they go out in the schools.